You're listening to Tarazi Tuesdays with the Bible as Literature. Hi, this is Father Mark Bulos, and you are listening to Tarazi Tuesdays with the Bible as Literature podcast. This week, Father Paul explains that you may not apply two rules in the land, one for insiders and one for outsiders. I am delighted to introduce Father Paul on the Bible as Literature podcast, Tarazi Tuesdays. And do not defile yourselves, because then the land in 25 becomes defiled, so that I punished its iniquity, and listen to the ending of verse 25, and the land vomited out its inhabitants. Again. I can't help it. It's not my teaching. I'm reading the Bible. Vomit, expectorate, parallels the ejaculation outside the vagina slash masturbation. In other words, you do it just because you want to do it yourself. Now, I know how modern psychologists say, but you know, sexual intercourse should be also for satisfaction and not producing the children. That is not the point. The point is to remind you of the function of the realities around you. You offer your firstborn to your God as Melech is acceptable but to offer it to another deity as Melek is not acceptable. And in 26, but you shall keep my statutes and my ordinances and do none of those abominations, either the native or the stranger who sojourns among you. Notice how the law, as we shall hear ultimately in Romans, applies also to any outsider who either happens to be within the people of the law or decides to join the people of the law. That's why circumcision by itself, as Paul says in Romans, does not make you a Jew except in appearance. To be a Jew, you have to follow the law. Ask any Jew. I mean, the Jews know that. It's the Christians who do not die that. Because for the Christians, you are a Christian if you go every Sunday to the service in your own community. That's enough. And you call taking care of the stranger of the poor as one of your activities. My friends, look at your satanic web pages. This is one of our activities. And you put it under the same title as taking your teenagers on a trip to visit Niagara Falls. It's high time, friends that we become serious and teach this from the pulpit. Now, verse 28 surmises on the statement of 25 that the land vomits its inhabitants by saying, lest the land vomit you out when you defile it, as it vomited out the nation that was before you. And this is the threat of God. In other words, you are no different than the other nations for me. 
if I punish them, I shall punish you for a similar sin. And you heard me so many times in the classroom is saying, if you were among the people who left Egypt and then in your services and we ultimately landed in the promised land, no one in his right mind would do that when the Lord is threatening you that you're going to be dealt with exactly as he dealt with Pharaoh and later with the nations in Canaan. So the ending of the chapter goes like that. So keep my charge never to practice any of these abominable customs which were practiced before you and never to defile yourselves by them. I am the Lord your God in my commandments for you to keep in order to do them. Now in chapter 19, we have the honoring or the revering of the Sabbath in the same wording as we had heard in Exodus 20. Every one of you shall revere his mother and his father and you shall keep my Sabbaths. I am the Lord your God. Do not turn to idols or make for yourselves molten gods. I am the Lord your God. The connection with not revering other deities and revering your mother and father is very clearly the same thing as we heard about in Exodus 20. But my comment here is that in Exodus 20 we hear you have to honor your father and mother and the verb honor I discussed it uh, with you earlier it is kibbed which is glorify in order to make clear to all those who are listening to me that the dealing with an elder is co-equivalent with the way you're supposed to deal with God because in Exodus 20 we have kabed which is glorify, which is the same root that is used in conjunction with God. Here you have a very interesting verb, which is revere, but in Hebrew we have the verb yare, which means to revere with fear. Yirat Yahweh. You have to fear your mother and father. I know if there are a few psychologists and here in the NATO countries everyone is a psychologist. Well, Father Paul, uh, we can't imagine that God is asking us to do that. I'm not asking you to imagine anything. I'm asking you to listen to what the text is saying. Then the importance of keeping the people alive around you is underscored in verses 9, 10, and 11, where we hear, when you reap the harvest of your land, you shall not reap your field to its very border, neither shall you gather the gleanings after your harvest, and you shall not strip your vineyard bare neither shall you gather the fallen grapes of your vineyard you shall leave them for the poor and for the sojourner i am the lord your god it is unbelievable it's not that you do your thing one more time because the earth around you is not yours it is god's he is the sole proprietor owner which is Malik in Hebrew. You shall not steal, nor deal falsely, nor lie to one another. Very important this, taking care of the land, because it is also the land of the other meaning that provides foods for you, for the other. If you have this text in mind, 
Then when you hear the news of today, you shall side with those Jews that are protesting against the policy of Israel in Gaza. Why would they do that? Because they are listening to the law and reminding everybody that this is what the law is saying. You may not apply two rules for the insiders and the outsiders. Remember Paul in 1 Corinthians 5. Why should I even judge the outsiders? It is God who judges them. And I forever remember the faces in my students when I cover this text with them in my class on Corinthians. They want to move ahead. Why? Because they were trained to speak about us, the insiders who were baptized and confirmed in the faith, and the others, the outsiders. You should not even consider the outsiders in order to judge them. Only God shall do that. But Paul obviously was trained in the law. In verse 15 we hear, You shall do no injustice in judgment. You shall not be partial to the poor or defer to the great, which we all do. Let me repeat that. We all do. Look at yourself, how you deal with your representative and the senator, and how you deal with your neighbor. You immediately deal with the senator or the representative as being on a pedestal, and thus as them being your molek. But in righteousness shall you judge your neighbor. You shall not go up and down and slander and then expansion on that. And then in verse 18, you shall not take vengeance or bear any grudge against the sons of your own people, but you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. Okay, remember earlier the neighbor was used also about the stranger. And then the rule of the seed, very important this chapter, applies as already was the case in Genesis 1 to the animals and to the vegetation. Let's hear it, verse 19. You shall keep my statutes, you shall not let your cattle breed with a different kind. You shall not sow your field with two kinds of seed, nor shall there come upon you a garment of cloth made of two kinds of stuff. This is extreme, my friends. And this is what civilization does. Look at the clothing industry. But in Leviticus 19.19, that's very easy to remember. I just noticed that. Remember it like that. When in doubt, re-listen to Leviticus 19.19. Why? Because then you are disturbing the will of God that decided in Genesis 1 that every fruit of a certain tree will have a seed of its own kind. The Bible as Literature is a production of the Ephesus School Network.